As promised, it's time for the Clark Barrington Show. We talk about the New Mexico Bowl preparations for the matchup in Albuquerque against SMU and potentially what his future holds and maybe some insight on his brother in the transfer portal. That's all ahead on today's show. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jay Catch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys checking out the show. Uh, our title sponsor today is our friends over at Sling TV. This episode of Locked On Cougars is brought to you by Sling TV. Don't miss this week's matchup or any of the bowl games between BYU and SMU or beyond on Sling. Sling, the TV you love for a price you'll love. Try it today. All right, please welcome in now BYU team captain, All-American, and starting left guard, Clark Barrington. One of the probably final few times we may be talking to him on this show, but Clark, thanks for joining us. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, so let's start here. It is finals week. Obviously, as you're getting through that, you also are going to be traveling to Albuquerque, New Mexico midweek uh, to get ready for that matchup with SMU. Uh, give me a sense for how things are going right now as you juggle all the schoolwork you got to finish up as well as practice. Yeah, um, you know, it's been good. Uh, you know, not too many, you know, crazy exams or tests on my end. You no, know, so I'm I'm lucky in that way. Um, so I'm just trying to focus on on the two exams I do have and and football and just playing this next game. So now uh, I I think congratulations are in order after those two exams. You are a college graduate. Is that correct? That is correct. It's finally uh, finally here. <laughs> you made it. Uh, and can you reveal that for you what your major is? What what are you graduating in? Uh, construction management. Oh, okay. So if any uh, Cougar fan out there wants you to build their house, essentially they can reach out to Clark Barrington. Is that right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, well, we'll let, we'll let the NFL career play out first before before you ultimately probably realize that dream. But uh, so as you get ready for this game, obviously coaches all the time talk about the fact that bowl practices are very valuable because they can use them to get uh, extra work in for younger guys. You're a guy who's the, on the back end of his collegiate career. The NFL is more in your immediate future than most guys. How do you feel the coaches have gone about uh, balancing getting work for the younger guys while at the same time making sure you and the rest of the starters are ready for this game yeah i think we've done a good job <clears throat> you know just focusing on what's in front of us um you know there have been chances um you know for the younger guys to get in there and and go and play and, and continue to learn and get better and whatnot um you know but we have spent a lot of time um you know with the starters and, and the guys that are are going to play the game preparing and, and prepping for you know what's ahead so i think i think we've got a good balance there um and I'm excited to, to continue to prepare and, and play this game. So Now, uh, obviously, there's been a lot of upheaval. <coughs> uh, coach Jay Hill is now your guys' associate head coach, defensive coordinator. Kelly Papinga has come back to the program after a hiatus of about seven years away from the program, a former player in his own right. Uh, just kind of give me a sense, uh, seeing guys like Coach Lamb, uh, Coach Tuyaki, et cetera, leave, how was that? Yeah, you know, they, they're great guys, and so it's it's hard you know, when you, when you see those guys leave, but um, I think the guys they brought in have are great and, and they've done a great job, you know, already. And, and you can tell, you can tell the difference, um, you know, especially on the defensive side of the ball, you know, the energy that's, that's brought during practice and, and the way they're flying around and doing their things. And so I think, I think it'll be a, a, an exciting, uh, you know, transition. So. Now, as mentioned, Coach Hill, he's working with the defense, same with Coach Papinga. But uh, what was his message? I saw that some of the video. You guys were in a team meeting when he was introduced to the team. Give me a sense of his message to the overall team because he does have that title of associate head coach. He will have more of a purview of the entire team versus just strictly defense. Yeah, for sure. You know, right now he, he kind of mentioned, you know, you know, he's here to you know kind of stand back and, and observe, um, you know, but – every day we're going to come out and get better and, and grind and, and push each other and compete and, and do those things to get better. And so that, that was his big message. You know, I'm, I'm kind of still here just trying to feel things out, observe, see what's going on, 
you know, but but he hasn't been afraid to step up and and say things and and correct things when needed. And, and so he, he's bringing a good energy and, and helping us just take a step forward. So now you obviously, like I mentioned, your your career is going to play out at, at the next level more than likely. Uh, are you any closer to making a decision on what you're going to do? Uh, I might be a little bit closer, but not a ton, <laughs> not a ton from the last time we've talked. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a tough decision. That's to say the least. So we'll, we'll see after the ball game, what, what comes. So now I, I, let me ask this, uh, with coaches like coach Hill coming into the program, you mentioned the fact that you feel like there's a renewed energy in the program. Is that any type of a draw for you potentially in terms of potentially coming back to be part of that and be part of the first, uh, first games of the first season of the big 12 era um i don't know if that's a huge draw uh, okay. you know it's like I'll, I'll for sure work with him and, and do those things and get to build that relationship you know if i do stay but um just more kind of personal and and family goals that i kind of want to achieve i think that's what's what's weighs weighs a lot on this decision so very cool uh so Last thing, I guess, more on the, the, I guess, the overall, the general overview front is uh, when you guys go into bowl games like this, uh, you and a number of other players throughout this season, even going back to uh, training camp and even throughout the past offseason, talked about the fact that the UAB game, the, the Independence Bowl last year, left a very bitter taste is, is the term I would I would use of, of just how you guys performed in that game. I think Coach Tuiaki said we essentially mailed it in. I remember at one point when he was talking about it. Uh, how much does the, the, the bad taste from that game last year motivate you guys going into this matchup against SMU? Yeah, I think, I think there's a lot of motivation, um, you know, from that, that experience. Um, you know, it's, it's actually been brought up multiple times, you know, these past couple of weeks in, in preparation for this bowl game. Um, you know, we're not going to, to Shreveport, but uh, you know, we, we are going to New Mexico, Albuquerque. And, and, huh? and so, you know, it's, it's not a tropical destination, right? It's not a super nice place you you hope to play in in a bowl game. Uh-huh. And we're taking – and we're realizing, you know, that's that's the same situation that we had last year. And, and so we need to do better, um, you know, with the situation we have this year. Um, and I, we've addressed, you know, the elephant in the room. You know, we didn't play well. And, and that's because of our mindset and, and the way that we went in there. And so – you know, we're doing the best we can to just stay positive, you know, continue to have fun and be grateful for, for every day that we have to, to play football. So, All right. I got one more question. I guess a tidbit on that we can talk about after we uh, talk about our friends over at Omaha Steaks. And, Clark, have you ever had an Omaha Steaks, uh, anything from Omaha Steaks? Uh, I haven't. But uh, their their gift card is in our uh, bowl gift suite. So, Oh, really? Hey. Uh, you know, maybe this is a this is a good info session for myself if I want to get their gift card. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we, I am going to ask you what's going in like the, the bowl gift suite. We'll get to that in a minute. But apparently, Omaha Steaks is part of this. So let me let me in, in, give you some ideas on this. So it's an insane offer right now. Omaha Steaks has cut the prices fifty percent site wide, Clark. So you can get fifty percent off already to help you achieve gift giving hero that you've always wanted to be. The holidays are here, so you can achieve gifting greatness when you give the gift of perfectly aged, tender, and delicious Omaha steaks. The best part is they have put together a delicious selection of various gift packages to make shopping for the ones you love nice and easy. Uh, I can tell you this much, Clark. My mother-in-law, for the past four or five years, has sent me a box of Omaha steaks absolute money and the funny thing is she actually uses the promo code every year she always asks what it is and then she goes out and shops for it so <laughs> you may have to use this as well so omaha steaks has got everything you need to give a gift that's simply perfect send an assortment of mouth-watering favorites including their uh, butcher's cup flame and yawn air bo- chilled boneless chicken burgers and even easy to prepare comfort meals that are ready in a flash and the best part is omaha steaks is a gift from the heart a gift that we remember with every unforgettable bite order with complete confidence today that you're knowing that you're ordering the very best so visit omaha steaks Dot com right now. Take advantage of the extra 50% off site wide, plus use the promo code locked on at checkout to get an extra $40 off your order. Minimum order might be required, but check it out, my friends. That's omahasteaks.com. 50% off site wide, plus 40% off uh, by using the promo code locked on. That's all courtesy of your friends over at Omaha Steaks. 
All right. Continuing on with Clark Barrington here, but a quick reminder for you guys, make sure to check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with the local experts and insights only the Locked On Podcast Network can provide. That's Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Clark, before I get to my tidbit about uh, New Mexico, you mentioned the fact that Omaha Steaks is going to be part of the gift suite potentially here for you guys. So uh, d- give me the dirt. Uh, what, what do they got all for you guys? In terms of what you can pick? <laughs> yeah, honestly, uh, you know, just, just like always, there's like a point system, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. We have five points, and the the nicer the item, the the more points it's worth. And so – no, there's there's quite a few you know different things on there you know from Beats headphones to air fryers to speakers sound bars whatever you know okay and so it just just depends on on what you're what you're feeling like and and of course there's that that um, Omaha steaks I think it's a gift card or something like that I don't know what it is really right. but hey. that's on there as well so so an air fryer huh yeah I guess yeah I think it's like three points or something like that for an air fryer so. Okay, well, uh, so do you do you have any inkling of where you might be tilting, or is or is Mrs. Barrington telling you, "Hey, that air fryer, bring that home with you"? Okay. Yeah, so we already got an air fryer, so I, I'm I'm not I'm not sure what we're what we're gonna select here, but we'll, we'll figure it out. All right. So I mentioned I had a tidbit for you. So this week, the forecast, and so we're recording this Monday night. So the forecast for Saturday here along the Wasatch Front in Provo in particular is a high of 26 degrees. Clark, do you have any idea what the forecasted high in Albuquerque, New Mexico on Saturday might be? Um, I know, like, I think the highs almost all week are either high 30s, low 40s. 43. So, so Okay. So okay. relative to, to potentially Provo, it might be quote unquote, a little more balmy down in. Yeah. yeah. It's For not, sure. it's not Hawaii. It's not 80 degrees, <laughs> not Boca Raton, Florida, you places that you have played or you've traveled to with BYU, but I guess relative to home, it might be just a tad bit warmer. So yeah, uh, perfect. Uh, you and you and I will both be there. I'll be traveling down with my radio station, the KSL Sports Zone. Very, look, very much looking forward to covering this game. But I, I wanted to uh, step away from that for a moment and talk about your younger brother, Campbell. Uh, recently entered the NCAA transfer portal. Uh, I think it caused a lot of BYU fans to say, "Okay, what just happened?" He's got his older brother as a starter on this offensive line. So, can you give uh, Cougar fans a little bit of an insight as to why Campbell decided to uh, take the plunge and jump into the portal? Yeah, um, you know, just looking for for new opportunities um, to continue to develop and continue to grow and and get better in every sphere. Um, and so he he thought that um, you know he he could he could do that elsewhere um, better than he could do it here. And so that's why he jumped in the portal and and he's seen you know lots of lots of success there in the portal. And he's he's still trying to narrow it down and, and make his final decision. So. Now, I think a lot of people wonder how, um, I guess, how quickly the portal moves, like the how, how, what the process is like. Obviously, you have not gone through it. You've played your entire career as a Cougar. You will finish your career as a Cougar ostensibly. Uh, you'll be in a BYU, BYU uniform. But from the outside, watching your brother go through this process, what's it like? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of crazy. Um, it's crazy how, how fast, you know, teams do reach out once that portal opens. So open what Monday morning or something like that, um, and by noon, you know I'd say probably ten to a dozen schools had already reached out to to him and and were interested in him coming there. And so now it's kind of in the official visits type of phase, and he's trying to get those set up and and figure out you know what what will be the best fit for him. So. Now, uh, you mentioned official visits. Obviously, when it comes to the high school recruiting, schools pay for you to fly in. They wine and dine you, put you up in a nice hotel, all that type of stuff. When it comes to the transfer portal, is it the same type of a deal? And I'm I'm tr- I'm trying to learn myself. So I'm, this is a this is a personal question for me. I, I want to know how this process works myself. Right. No, it's it's very similar. Um, you know, they they flew him, fly him, and two others out. Um, so I think my dad and his wife will go go with him on, on those. And then, um, you know, they wine and dine you, feed you every hour of the day, and, and you do some fun things here and there. And then 
And I think it's a little bit different, you know, because you have played, you know, at, at a high level and all that stuff. So kind of all the flash, flashy things, you know, it doesn't matter a whole, whole lot. It's more just about the fit and the people you're going to be around and all that stuff. So there's, there's a little bit of, of change, you know, depending on if you're a high school recruit to, to transfer. And so, you know, it, it, it's very similar though, for sure. Now, from your personal experience, you mentioned the fact that, yeah, the the, the pizzazz, the glitz and the glam of uh, when you're a high school student, they're trying to like show off. Like you, you come to BYU, they're taking you up to, into the Wasatch back and you're, you're riding snowmobiles and that type of stuff. Now, if you, I'm going to put you in, say you were transferring and you were going around to these visits in your mind, you mentioned the fact you'd be looking for more of the fit. So uh, give me two or three things that in particular that maybe you'd be looking for now versus maybe what you had been looking for when you're a high school recruit. Yeah, I think, you know, most importantly is, is just like, what's my future going to look like, you know? And so instead of, you know, all the gear you're going to get, you know, all the nice things, you're going to get that kind of, kind of everywhere. And so, you know, it doesn't really matter where you go for that stuff, but, you know, who, who's the coach? How can he develop me? Um, where do I see myself playing and, and fitting in in this offense? Um, how how am I going to get along with the culture at a certain place or whatnot? I think I think those are some of the more important questions um, to be answered in, in these these visits. So you mean to tell me that the swag no longer is, is an issue for you? Then? Is, that, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think that will sway me too much these days. So, <laughs> well, uh, I, I'm I'm married to a former Division One athlete, and she I can tr trust me. Those gear issue days, and you guys get it even more so in football because it seems like it's three or four times throughout the year. You guys are getting, uh, you guys get absolutely inundated with that stuff. Yeah, for sure. They they give us a lot a lot more than we can probably use sometimes. So, <laughs> so it's nice, but it, it happens everywhere. It seems like so. And this is, I guess, this is just another question about the recruiting process. Uh, there are a lot of people out there who claim that like Nike schools or Adidas schools or Under Armour schools, like how much of a pull that might have. D did that have any type of pull for you that BYU was a quote, was a Nike school or did you even consider that notion? Honestly, uh, not really. It's nice okay. that they are, though. <laughs> <laughs> your is that your preferred uh, as apparel provider? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. Very cool. Um, so last thing on this, obviously uh, there are going to be people, people wondering, okay, Clark may be sticking around at BYU. Why would Campbell be leaving the program? Uh, just give, give us a, give me, and I guess the rest of Cougar nation, a little bit of an insight as to the decision-making process when you, you two have been kind of tied at the hip for a long time. How tough was that to have him say, Hey, I I'm, I'm looking elsewhere. Um, honestly, not too tough. Um, I support him and everything he, he does and in his decisions. And I, I think, you know, it, it's definitely, uh, you know, different not having him around every day. Um, but it will be good for him um, in the long run. And, and I hope he just continues to learn and, and develop and become the, the player he, he wants to be and the player I know he can become. So it'll be good in the end for sure. Uh, so let's, I want to talk a little bit more about, uh, bowl festivities. You've been through a number of bowl games now in your career. I want to talk about some of your memories of those. We'll get to those in just a moment, but Clark, let's talk about our friends over at built bar. And obviously uh, you're part of the BYU football program. You are part of that team wide, uh, built bar, uh, NIL deal that built bar put together for Cougar, uh, football players in the BYU football program. But the best part is, is they have that Cougar Tell flavored built bar. And uh, I guess you can, you can give more of an insight into this because the way I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong here, is that every time those Cougar Tell flavors are bought, there is a 15% of that bar is reinvested right back into the BYU football program and literally goes into your guys' pockets. Am I wrong? Yeah, that's, that's the, that's the gist, I think. Yeah. Well, that's the best part about it. So uh, Cougar fans, if you want to support BYU football, there's so many w different ways to do it, but you can do it with the best tasting protein bars out there. The best part is right now they got a number of new flavors out there. They have the cookie dough topper, coconut brownie bar, as well as the coconut brownie topper. I can tell you this much. I've had the coconut brownie topper. It's absolutely phenomenal, but I, I still, Clark, I'm telling you, that Cougar Tell flavor, it's absolute money. I, I think it's absolutely incredible. I, I'm a big fan. I, I think Cougar Tells are great to begin with. The fact that they were able to capture that flavor in a protein bar, well, that's it's much healthier and much better for you. Let's just put it that way. So, <laughs> 
uh, we'll just encourage everybody to go to built.com right now. Uh, the macros on these are absolutely incredible, incredibly high in protein, uh, fiber, and they're very low in sugar and fat. So give them a shot. That's built.com. Use the promo code locked on 15 for 15% off your order. Promo code locked on 15 at built.com. Save 15% while at the same time with that Cougar Tell flavor in particular, getting 15% back to BYU and their football program via our friends at Built Bar. Also need to get a word in on our friends over at UCCU. UCCU is uh, bringing you a brand new offer of a 15-month savings certificate with an incredibly high APY of 4.00%. The best part is during that 15-month period, you can jump up to an even higher rate of return anytime during the life of that certificate. Now, many of you are probably wondering, okay, what's a savings certificate uh, versus what uh, a uh a savings account or a money market might be what it is. It's an incredibly high return on the investment. You put it in there one time and you let it sit there for the 15 months and grow and grow and grow. We all know that interest rates and inflation are both on the rise. You can take advantage of this opportunity to build your wealth by using this savings certificate from UCCU. Uh, the best part is you can do it in a myriad of different ways. You can stop into any UCCU branch, call them, go online to uccu.com to get started. You can learn more there at uccu.com. If you got questions, the best part is, uh, your savings can start working harder and earn you more. And the best part is if it's not necessarily what you're looking for, maybe a longer or shorter term, they have a variety of term options that helps match your specific needs as well. So get to uccu.com to learn more, to get started on that savings certificate today. And once again, that's UCCU love where you bank. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day every single day. Uh, finishing up here with Clark Barrington. And Clark, uh, as mentioned, you have been to a number of bowl games in your uh, playing career. Uh, can you give me, I guess, if you had, a, uh, I guess, me give me a power ranking of the bowl games you've been to slash played in in your BYU career, what is the best one you've ever played in? Okay. Um, it's hard to beat Hawaii. So, so I'm going to put that on. I would agree with you on that. Yeah, I'm gonna put that one uh, probably number one. Okay. Um, you know, just an awesome place to be in, and, and then I'll probably go Boca Raton. Just another oh. good, warm, tropical place. <laughs> and sensing, then, what's up? Sorry, I'm sensing a trend here. Of, of yeah. Of, hey, any anytime you can you can get out of the cold and. Put on some bathing suits and, yes. and go hop in the ocean. I think that's that's a good time. So, um, and then probably after that one, Idaho Potato Bowl. Okay. And then, you know, I'm just assuming that this one's going to be better than Shreveport. So, <laughs> Shreveport's going to be on the bottom. <laughs> There's a chasm, and then Shreveport shows up. And yeah, you know, to a man, I I'm serious. Media. Uh, administrators, players, coaches, anybody I have talked to about the Independence Bowl just shudders at the mere thought of that bowl game. What about it? Like, what was the issue? What, what, was it the weather? Was it just the location? What was it? I think all of it. Okay. <laughs> uh, the location, the weather was terrible. It was like you were playing in the shower. It was raining so hard. Um, you know, our hotel was two miles away from any type of food place. Oh, um, not the best city to, to go out and walk around, okay. <laughs> especially for all the wives that went. Uh -huh. so it was, a, it was a lot of, a lot of door dashing, a lot of trying to figure out what to do with your time in the hotel room. So it was Man. interesting. Uh, are you a big fan of the, like the bowl festivities or their bowl games or they have like different competitions between the teams? I don't know what New Mexico necessarily has planned for you guys, but do you like those activities that lead up to the bowl game? Honestly, not a ton. I'm, okay. I'm the type of dude that doesn't want to see the other team until we play them. And then we hopefully beat them and we just move on from there. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's definitely fun activities for sure. Um, but it's kind of like uh, they try to bring you together, you know, camaraderie type of deal. And you know, I think that's just hard for me to to join in on that when, you know, you just want to go and, and beat these guys super bad the next day. So it's an interesting – it's an interesting deal, but – 
Yeah, I, I, I can I can respect that. And that's the thing about it. So uh, as somebody who knows somebody very close to you who has told me, Clark's whole ethos is he's he's a really <laughs> nice guy off the field. But they described you as and I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to edit this here, but he's a bleep when he gets between the between the lines. And P, and he's, and the person also added Clark that if you were to ask his teammates, they would completely agree that he's a bleep when he gets on the football field. Yeah, yeah, it's it's true. Um, I, <laughs> yeah, it's it's different, right? You, I, I feel like at least for me, there's there's a switch that needs to be flipped, and so you know for sure we're gonna be best friends, um, you know, in 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 the locker room doing those things, you know. But if you're on defense and and we're going against each other at practice, then there's probably a chance that that I'm not going to be the, the best guy to you at, at that moment, but off the number, field. Yeah, for sure. Number, we're good friends. Number 56. That, that, that's the, that, that's the persona you take on. Apparently that, that, that number is just, it's how people, <laughs> people operate. And Hey, I, I can, I can respect it. And that kind of goes back to, I think uh, more of what you talk about with those bowl festivities. Like you're like, okay, I don't really want to be hanging out with this other team. I just want to go out and win the football game. Yeah, for sure. Now, okay, uh, one of the last things I got for you here, what has been the best uh, in terms of, we talked already about the bowl uh, gifts, uh, the gift suite that you guys will be able to pick from this week. What is the best gift that you have picked up in your time at playing college football so far? Hmm. Well, I think the best gift is the, you know, every year the university gives us a little little gift card. Okay. And $400. And so I think that that's definitely the best gift every year. Get to spend it however you need or want, and so okay. you know there, there's a lot of freedom there. Um, as far as gift suite goes, I got a I got a nice yet cooler. Uh, okay, I think it was from the Idaho Potato Bowl. All right, so that that's been put to use, and and it's it, it's good good gift for sure. Well, hey, Yeti coolers are all are, they're all the rage, man. So I, oh that's, yeah. That's a- uh, that's really cool that the university does that. So they just give you like a four hundred dollar gift card. And there's no stipulations on it or anything like that. Then, yep, yep. Well, that's fantastic. I, that's honestly, I I had no clue that they actually did that for you guys. That's actually really really commendable. Because in addition, you also get to travel. Your wife gets to go. It's kind of their their way of saying thank you. I think to all of the the wives, the kids that have put up with the long long hours that you guys are away from them. Yep, for sure. It's it, it's a good time. Well, Clark, uh, very much looking forward to this game. As mentioned, I- I'll be going down to New Mexico myself. Hopefully we can catch up after the game. And hopefully this will not be the last time we talk before you ultimately make that decision. But uh, we best- wish you best of luck in that matchup against SMU. Go be that bleep on the football field for us. <laughs> hopefully bring home a W. And then we'll talk more as you finally make your decision as to what your future is going to hold. All right? Sounds good. Appreciate it. All right, there you go. That's Clark Barrington. A big thank you to him, as always, for taking the time to join us right here on Locked On Cougars. And a big thank you to all of you for making us your first listen of the day. Want to encourage you now to make your second listen our friends over at the Locked On Big 12 podcast. Catch up on everything going on in BYU's future conference home with Josh Neighbors. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts, just like this one. Also available on YouTube. Check that out right now. That'll do it for Clark uh, and for myself. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast. See ya.